Hey, how you doing? This is John and welcome to John's Long Box. Today, I'm gonna check out Rock and Roll Ninja. This is from Splato Comics. As you can see, Splato Comics. This is uh, Richard C. Meyer, Chuck Dixit, and Mike Barr. Uh, first off, let's just look at this graphic design on this. I, the, the aesthetic is, it's supposed to be like a, as if it came out in the, in the 80s, like a, a fanzine, and man, they knocked it out of the park. Uh, the premise is a little weird, but that's the charm of it. Is is the Vietnam vets? They come back, and they become New York like, I I, I want to say like proto punk rockers, like almost they they kind of remind me of like like uh, the Stooges or something like that be, before uh, be, before punk was 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 big, you know Stooges uh, maybe even like Ramones era, and they become a band called Uzi Does It. What a great name for the band! So just look at look at the aesthetic that they captured. You know, they've got these graphics that, that are just in here. The, the, uh, New York City old school subway token. And then all these letters. They, they, they're doing a rock, a punk, underground punk zine look. And they it is just outstanding. The black and white. You can't feel it. Like, I like that. They got a fingerprint over here. Like, every detail. The Splato logo is slightly off. It's it's perfect. It's just perfect. You know, I love, I just, they just did a great job. Now, this is a thicken, so I'm not going to show the entire book for two reasons. It's brand new, and uh, they're going to do a new launch campaign, so that uh, catch-up campaign for anybody who missed it. it. seemed to be like a sleeper hit. Not everybody jumped on it, but it, there, it, it, it's excellent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bury the lead. It's excellent. So they're going to do another campaign. So I'm not going to show off everything because it's still new. Uh, it, it, it's about it's still going on sale and it's 100 pages i don't have two hours to explain it but just you know i love the off color look everything about this just 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 so good all right so i'm just gonna jump around so look, just look at this i don't know I, I i i'm very enamored by it oh full disclosure I just finished reading this, so I'm probably on a, on a high. Second, uh, I'm friends with Matt Barr. He's a good guy, you know. I so keep that into consideration. Also, I, I hired Matt Barr to do a page for my comic, so I just want to be totally transparent. Um, I was one of Richard T. Myers' insiders, and I, I, you know, Chuck Dixon calls me his buddy. So consider all of that while while you do this, you know. I, 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 but uh, I, <laughs> it's just so good. So I'm all excited. So I'm just opening up to random pages. Like I said, the story, I already explained the story. It's, it's, it's Vietnam vets. They come back to New York. They can't fit in. Matter of fact, here's the page where they talk about they can't fit in. That was just a coincidence. This guy's editing. This guy's uh, orchid for the city uh, in, in, like as, as a, 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 a sewer hog. Uh, 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 there, there's a word for that. I can't even remember now. But... Uh, this guy repair an elevator. I, I just like all the, and then the other guys working like it, it, like just bizarre. Like, uh, believe it or not in the city, there was a, a club that I used to go to called the pyramid club and they would have drag shows and punk rock shows. And it was the craziest place in the world. You'd have skinheads, you'd have punk rockers with like the GBH thin mohawks. And then you'd have like drag queens all just hanging out. Look, look at a band. So that's what this guy just, just getting caught up in all that. And then, you know, they go to a Vietnam veterans reunion and they talking about getting the band back together. They, it was really funny. Uh, there was some shelling during a USO show. Everybody dropped the, the, their equipment and these guys just jumped up and started goofing around. Now they're learning how to play. And like I said, the band, I don't know what aesthetic uh, that Matt, Chuck and, and, and Richard are going after, but to me, they, they seem like the Stooges, you know, you know the MC or maybe even the MC5 things like that and now you know I would really like it if somebody was to play these songs that would be so cool but anyway anyway I'm getting excited but look at Matt Barrett's art over here he you know he came on my channel and we talked about hanging out at CBGB's and that's that's where they're, they're playing at CBGB's you know now they're playing in meatpacking plants. Like Matt knows his punk rock lore. Richard C. Byer knows his punk rock lore. Chuck Dixon, I don't know. <laughs> but this is like old school 1977. This is like, you know, during the mud club time. Uh, you know, just, just freaks. It was, it was dangerous back then, you know. I just, I just loved it. And Matt is just, look at this. There's, there's pages that I have to show. But, okay, 
Okay, perfect example. Look at this. Look at this panel over here. Oh my God, look at the detail in that. This is just an old school. So they got recruited to train. Uh, they don't know who. They were blindfolded and now they're training. They're getting paid $1,000 a week for six weeks times four. So that's $24,000 tax-free 1977 money. You know what I mean? These guys are broke. So they're like, we, we could we could get new equipment. We could hire roadies. We could do... So th that's what they're doing. And meanwhile, these guys are teaching them Kung Fu. And lo and behold, they get trapped. You know, the deal goes... The deal goes bad. Look, look at these jungle scenes over here. And now they can't leave. They, they, they didn't realize it, but they got recruited into like a ninja clan. And like, you, you can't leave. Okay. But I, 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 I'm skipping through because I want to show some New York City scenes. Okay, here we are. So just keep in mind, Matt drew all of those jungle scenes. And now look at this, these cityscapes. He knows his Manhattan. You know, and, and Richard C. Meyer. I'm, you know, not surprised he, he lived in Manhattan. He he knows his, his old Manhattan, too. You know, this is the Manhattan that you see in the in the uh, taxi driver. But uh, again, I'm, I'm I just wanted to look at this. Look at this. I can recognize some of the buildings. You know, I, I feel like I've been to some of these stores, you know, it's a little Kirby cigarettes, Kirby cigars sold here, you know, a little tribute to Jack Kirby. You know, just look at this. There's, there's one panel in particular I really want to show. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to forgive me for just flipping through fast because I, I, I don't want to show it. I don't want to give away the comic. But look, okay, so here's just going through Manhattan. This is the Manhattan. Look at this. This is what I wanted to show right over here. All the stuff from, from building tops. This is what Matt, uh, he must have hung out smoking cigarettes on top of buildings at one point. Because this is exactly what it looks like. You know, the graffiti on the water towers, the, the, the smoke that's just rising everywhere in the city. You know, look look at this. You know, this is somewhere around like 23rd Street is, is what I'm picturing. Just just look at all of this. It's so good. So good. Matt, you know, I, I knew Matt was talented. But this is the first full-on comic that I've seen him draw. And yes, I'm talking about Matt's art because... It's just phenomenal. I mean, I already talked about Richard's writing. We all know Chuck Dixon can write. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm getting dangerously close to showing the entire book. But uh, to me, th this art is just phenomenal. I'm so glad I hired Matt to do a page. And now, I, I hey, Matt, you, you, you available for regular work? If my comic heroic tales is a success, <laughs> you know, I got, I got more stuff to do. <laughs> Hit me up. But there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Matt's a buddy. This is this is the sleeper hit of the year. This is by far the best thing Splato Comics has done. You know, Splato did to, to me the next best was was Jawbreakers. That was uh, Richard T. Meyer's break, breakout hit, and then it, Iron Sights. But this this is phenomenal. Uh, I'm now I'm going to embarrass myself by by gushing and gushing and gushing. So I will focus and I'll stop now. Um, there will be uh, a. Uh, uh, a second campaign to get this if, if you missed it it was going to be four issues and then they got this idea to make it like a just a graphic novel i guess i guess richard didn't want to deal with four campaigns which i guess is smart you know and then and then it came with the poster and it came with a little patch that is upstairs on my dresser so i, I forgot to, to get it so we, we got this big fold out poster just awesome awesome Good job, Matt. Good job, Richard Meyer. Good job, Chuck Dixon. I, I really, and I, I like this little uh, chibi ninja guy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so cool. All right. Thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.